for our Glacier Drive Live event, we have uh, Rick Stewart of All Access Coaching as our speaker. For his session, he is going over the best practices for using the wing tee to attack defenses and how defenses can read and defend against a wing tee team. To celebrate the coming launch of the Rick Stewart All Access Wing Tee Play Library coming to Team Nation, registrants for this will also receive a complimentary guide featuring Rick's top five wing tee plays and coaching notes after the webinar. Former CFL O-lineman Riker Matthews and former Utah State wide receiver Preston Curtis, who we have on here right now, will join Rick to share from the player point of view. Um, Coach Stewart, if you want, you can go ahead and share your video. Okay, um, doing it right now. Awesome. All right. So we're gonna start with offense. Um, oh, what happened here? Okay, share screen, there we go. All right, so you guys will holler at me, right? If you could see my PowerPoint. Yep, it's popping up right now. Perfect, perfect. Hey, again. Uh, 20 something coaches logging in, in 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 August, in the middle of two days. Very impressive. Listen, fellas, I, I don't claim to have some secret formula or secret sauce. I have been doing this a while. So uh, it's probably just come from the perspective of all the times I've made mistakes. Um, we do run the pistol wing tee. This is not your grandfather's wing tee. This is, uh, we went to pistol when Colin Kaepernick um, was in Nevada, Reno in his uh, pre-kneeling days before uh, he kind of got banned, which is unfortunate. I'm a big Colin Kaepernick fan. Um, and let me get this slideshow started. There we go. I'm going to leave that up for just a second, fellas. Um, there's my cell phone. I'm in season. I'm not going to lie to you. I'd really appreciate if you didn't call me. <laughs> I, it's tough right now during the season. But text messages are easy because, you know, when you have a quick water break, you can return a quick text message. That's really easy. Um, I'm really good with email. I'm pretty much uh, email, you know, 16 hours a day, the eight hours I'm not sleeping. Um, so there's how you get a hold of me. Um, this really isn't going to be so much wing T specific. Honestly, if you're running any sort of gap scheme, uh, this, this will work for you. In my opinion, my two cent opinion, that's only worth one penny. There are two types of offenses in America. There's a gap scheme and there's a zone scheme. And what you're seeing now, though, is a, is a lot of hybrid, right? A lot of the pistol shotgun wing T guys, we're running duo, we're running pin and pull. And then a lot of the zone teams um, got tired of just running inside outside zone and they put some of the, some of the gap scheme concepts in it. I think the gap scheme is, is the way to go in high school. Uh, we led the state of Pennsylvania, all classifications in offense in 2019, the year before COVID. We had over 7,000 yards of total offense. Our quarterback ran for 2,200. Uh, both our wings ran for a thousand and our right guard weighed 140 pounds. Uh, this year, we're going to be pretty stinking good. I think we have a chance to, to do some damage again, and we do not have one lineman over 200 pounds. And, uh, and we're going to put up some pretty, pretty big numbers. It's not my coaching at all. It's not me. I think the gap scheme allows a small kid to be successful, which in high school, that's sometimes that's all we got, right? Uh, we, we don't always have a guy, like, like Preston's friend who played in the Canadian football league, you know? Um, so, um, so yes, it says wing tee up. I don't want to scare everybody off. We're in the pistol. We are sexy. Um, we get in a lot of two by twos. We, our passing game is all air raid based. So real quick, let me go over some, I'm going to really fly through this because of time. Cause I got to switch to defense. So these slides are going to go pretty fast. Um, you guys email me. I'll send you this PowerPoint. It's not a big deal. Email me tonight. You'll have the PowerPoint tonight before I go to bed because I'm going to fly through this pretty fast. Some of the things we do in the off season, I think is really important. You've heard this a thousand times. You have to self-scout yourself. Um, I already have a folder on every team we're playing this year that didn't have a coaching change because what they did against me last year is probably what we're going to do again because my scout film a lot of times is 10 personnel, no tight end. I get a lot of uh, zone scheme stuff. This doesn't tell me what they're going to do against me and vice versa. If you guys are running a double wing and I back something like that, you know, self scout yourself so that, so that you know what, what you're going to be facing. And I already have my folder done and I already have my, my scouts got, I have these cards drawn up on every play. It takes me a long time in the spring. I have these cards drawn up on every play I ran against all the teams that I'm going to play this year that didn't have a coaching change. If it has a Jersey number, 
they're an underclassman. If it just has letters, that's a senior. So when I get the film this year, when I play them, I, I just quickly have to just, just scout the guys that they replace. The odds are that number 42, if there's the Mike Backer as a junior, he's going to be the Mike Backer as a senior. Odds are, unless I put up 60 on them, they're probably going to run the same scheme. They're going to slant to motion, slant to field, stuff like that. So I draw these up for every play. Yes, it is painstaking. That's 60 plays. Say seven opponents did have a coaching change. I'm not a math major. Seven, I don't know, 420 scout cards. What I do is I basically do a team a week, okay? I know it's a little tough now, August 15. I also have a down distance chart that goes in that team's folder. So if I'm playing you, I've got my cards drawn up and I've got this stuff. So I know what you did against me in these situations in terms of blitzes. When did you like to go to man coverage? When did you go to a too high safety stuff? Things like that. Again, I already told you about, I'm only worried when I do this about underclassmen. And obviously I'm, I'm going fishing. I call it going fishing. I got to find the fish, right? Um, nobody has genetically identical, identical defensive ends, outside backers, corners. That's really where I'm focused. One of your corners is going to be weaker than the other. I've got to find that guy, and that's my fishing hole. That's where I'm going fishing, okay? Um, for us, because we are a sugar huddle team, uh, in fact, this is why we put up numbers. It's not because we run wing T. We sugar huddle, and we sprint out of the huddle, and we snap the ball in three seconds. You're going to line up in three seconds because we're going to snap the ball. It allows me to do a lot of unbalance. I do a lot of tackle over. I do a lot of four, five-man surface stuff. And it also allows me to win with 140, 170, 180-pound linemen because I can flop people around, get my stronger players together, create double teams where I want it. So I need to know if you're flopping. Okay, if you're going to flop your personnel, is it strength or field? Or where are you calling your strength? Are you, are you as a D coordinator, are you a tight end guy, multiple receiver guy, field guy? This is important stuff, right? I need to know this stuff, right? I run motion a lot, um, and that could be a tendency for me. So I need to know what are you doing against motion. And if I can figure out what you're doing, it's really awesome because now I'm going to do the motion. You think it's a tendency, and I'll counter against the motion, right? Um, we're not going to run option this year. The four years I've been here in Pennsylvania, we've been running the ball a lot and pitching the ball a lot and running a lot of option because I've had some running quarterbacks. This last year, the year before, um, that just finished, um, the starting point guard of the Basel team was our quarterback. He got the league's most valuable offensive player. Well, now I've got a, a sophomore quarterback that weighs 140 pounds. He's got a pretty good arm. Um, he couldn't beat a pregnant lady in a race. So we're, we've kind of taken the option stuff out. And all we did, though, is the guy he's reading for option, we now made that guy an RPO guy. So we just replaced triple option run and pitch stuff with, with RPO stuff. That's a whole nother PowerPoint, another Glazier clinic. Okay. Getting very specific, D linemen. Uh, every D coordinator has a philosophy. Are they going to pin their ears back and shoot the gaps and try to get up in, in field, up field and, and, and create problems? People say, well, that's dumb. I'll just trap them and counter them. Well, you got to be careful because a team that makes a living off that, there's a guy in Texas running a 10 1 defense, and the people are having a hard time with it because he just brings 10 guys and hits every gap. And it, it, you can't block them all. And they're in the backfield creating all kinds of problems. And, and then you're third and 20. Um, so I need to know that. Or are you a uh, uh, read and react and you're going to squeeze down with the down blocks and wrong shoulder pulls. So I need to know that. Um, again, uh, where's the D lineman reducing and shading to? Then I go to the linebackers. Are you going to read guards? Most of the 20 tech linebacker guys, the 425, the 44, the 34 guys are going to read guards. But the 43 guys, what I have found is they're cross reading my wings and their mic backers reading my tailback. So I need to know that. What's the outside backers doing to motion? Some people like to blitz behind our motion. Some guys like to blitz into the motion. Whatever offense you run, you're going to run jet sweep. You need to know this. And how far out does the outside backer go on the number two receiver? Is there, are they a reroute number two guy or are they an apex split the different stuff? This is stuff you need to know, right? Obviously zone or man. And then the, and then the safeties. Do you have one or two high safeties? Uh, so you go in and, and have your notes and, and make sure that this stuff is done, okay? Now it's in season. I get your film on Saturday morning. Um, you know, hopefully you get two or three trade films. And I already have this stuff, so I'm just going to go back and confirm it, right? I'm not going to do every single down and distance. I'm only worried about critical calls. On my call sheet, this is all I have, okay? I want to I want to have two, my, my go-to plays on third and long. want to get in the red zone. My goal line, my coming out, my trick plays, I love trick plays. I put a trick play in every week. Um, I love going for two um, because you just scored a touchdown. You've demoralized them. 
the 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 parents are yelling at the coach the coach is yelling at the players we sprint down then we line up again we run a two-point conversion the defense and the fans feel like we scored again the moms think we scored a second touchdown it's very demoralizing to get that two-point conversion so we've made a living off that um last i checked i still have the central section record in california for most two-point conversions we made 47 one year so that's that's a I want to have those. I have a, a chart on my street. Again, you email me. I'll send you my call sheet that I have in the press box and how I lay out my call sheet. Because my call sheet is not by down and distance. My call sheet's very unique. I can guarantee you it's a call sheet you've never seen before. So if you want a different perspective, email me and I'll send that to you. Okay? During the weekend, we meet very briefly as a staff and we're only focused on the other team. We do not watch our film as a staff. It's a waste of time. Those coaches can go home. The single guys watch it early because they want to go to the bar that night. And the married guys wait till the wife and kids go to bed. And then they stay up a little bit later. Every position coach grades their players. Again, email me. I've got an Excel sheet for every position, offense and defense. There's six total, D-line, linebackers, O-line, running backs. And I go through and we grade our players and we post them in the locker room. The kids love it. They sprint. They sprint when we post grades. Players want to please their coaches. And so this is what's important to you. For us running backs, if you don't fake, you get a negative two. Uh, the linemen, um, you know, we got plus, it's a plus one, plus, plus two, minus one, minus two. And it comes out as 100%, 90%, 80%. Kids understand it. Kids can see what, where they can improve and they can see what they need to get better at. On game night, this is very, very hard. You have to train the eyes of your staff. I don't care what offense you're running. You've got to train the eyes of your staff. So our defensive coaches, okay, are, well, okay, we're on offense. Okay, let me back up here. We're on offense, and you'll notice, um, yeah, at the fourth one, our linebacker and our DB coach, our linebacker coach is our DC. They're talking and game planning what their next series of defense is, why we're calling the offense. We steal the outside linebacker coach, and we steal the D-line coach, okay? And we have our D-line coach watch the D-tackle and nose guards. Our O-line coach watches our O-line. Our wide receiver coach watches their coverage. And, and all I want them to tell me is the jersey number of who made the tackle. I memorize all 11 or maybe 13 or 14 jersey numbers going into the game. So all you have to tell me in the headset is 56. That's all I need to hear. I know 56 is the backside outside backer. If he's making the tackle, I need to come back with a perimeter play action pass play because he's cheating in to make the tackle in the tackle box. Um, if the D tackle is squeezing down, well, then we've set him up for, for, uh, for an off tackle play. So all I need is a Jersey number so that I can counter with my if then statement. Very few of my calls are based on dis down and distance. My play calls are based on who made the tackle previously and how can I put him in conflict? Here's the if then stuff, right? Kind of obvious stuff. If I get a tackle off the edge, got a squeezing defensive end, I'm coming with buck sweep. I've got buck sweep drawn up. I only picked a few plays, guys. I'm not covering every wing T play. It take too long. I'm only covering three wing T plays. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you buck sweep drawn up. But if the defensive end squeezing hard, we want to run buck sweep. If the DN's coming up field, we run down. Down and buck. Down is off tackle power kick. The guard, the play side guard's pulling and kicking. And we're sending our fullback up through the hole. The down and buck are sister plays. This puts the defensive end in conflict. You always have to have two plays married together so that if this player goes left, you run play A. If this player goes right, you run play B. You've got to pair up your plays so that you have it-then statements. That's a system. Don't just have a package of plays that are random and independent. The plays have to be married together and set each other up and work together. If they're penetrating, obviously I'm going to trap and counter them. If they're really good, um, squeezing and coming off tackle, then I'm going to pull the ball and run sort of, sort of option, RPO, play action pass on the perimeter. And anybody on the backside who's coming over the tough midline and making the tackle, I got to hit them with counters. Um, I am going to show you on this, uh, this PowerPoint, you're going to see tackle trap. You're going to see belly drawn up. You're going to see buck drawn up and waggle. Okay? Formations. I have some basic rules. I'm giving my credit to my buddy, Roger Holmes, who's won a couple state titles down in Georgia. Georgia's pretty high level coaching to win a state title down there. You're going against some dudes. Okay. Not like some of these other states where you're going against, you know, some walk on firemen or police officer. 
Georgia has professional full-time coaches. They could, that's all they do all day. And then we put to work. They just watch film for eight hours a day. They don't teach classes just like Texas. And, and Rogers won three state titles down there. You can find all of his stuff on my website, allaccesscoaching.com. So I got this from Roger. If the defense is balanced, like a 4-4, we want to be unbalanced. We want to run a bunch of unbalanced at a balanced 3-3 stack, a balanced 4-4. If the defense is unbalanced, where they're rolling a safety to one side or they're shading their defense alignment to the tight end side, then we want to be balanced. So we want to go opposite of what the defense is. That's kind of just a rule of thumb. Even fronts, I'm going to start inside and work out. I'm, and even fronts, I'm going to start with the three tech, see what he's doing, work out to the DN uh, in my game planning. So I'll start up, up in the A and B gaps and see what I can do with that D tackle. The D tackle squeezing hard and taking care of his A gap like he's supposed to. Then I'll work out to the, to the tackle hole. Against odd fronts, I'm going to work outside and come in. What I'm, my goal with the odd fronts, either by formations or running the ball, I'm going to get the defense to, to get out of their odd front. I want those three down linemen to have, to have to slide a man to the tight end, or I want the linebackers to have to shift over because I'm going to be making a living. I'm going to be eating every meal off tackle, okay? So in the wing T, I have a couple of flanks. The flanks, the edges. I can have a tight end wing surface. I could have a split in wing. Some people call this a slot, okay? I can go trips, close, or close, close trips, close, close, open. Any offense in America has these flanks, right? So what are they doing to get your trips closed uh, and trips open? Trips closed for you youth coaches means that there's trips on one side and tight end on the other. Then we have our unbalanced, right? This is where we bring both tackles to this, over to the same side. And so now we have uh, on, the, on one side, we have a guard tackle tackle and our tight ends playing the other tackle position. So it messes the defense up with their calls if they're trying to make their strength call to the tight end. Or I'll bring the guard, tackle, tackle, and tight end, all four over to the same side. I put my receiver, yes, my little lettuce-eating wide receiver at the backside tackle, and now I have a four-man surface. I'll go four linemen on one side and go trips on the other side. So where's your strength? Are you going to honor my trip side? Or are you going to honor my four, four, four linemen side? And then coaches, I'll go four linemen on one side. That's Tubby, guard, tackle, tackle, tight end, with a wing back and a lead blocker and a tailback. So we're going to give the ball to our tailback, and we're going to have six lead blockers. You're going to have to honor that, and when you do honor it, then I can counter you. Then we have our special formations, okay? Again, the goal is to get them out of their base, get them out of their comfort zone against a three-man front. So if I can get those three D linemen to shift, Coaches, that's an under front now. Now they're in, to me, now that's an even front and that's an under front. Okay, I've got a three tech, I got a one tech, and I got a seven tech. So they've got out of their four zero four, which is what they practice every day. So that's this is good stuff right here. Get them out of their comfort zone. Another thing with the three man front, okay? This out, this guy right here, what are they going to do? They have to honor my tight end, or I'm going to run to the tight end till the cows come home. So are they going to bring that guy up? And now the corner is the force defender. Hey, let's be honest. If that corner knew how to tackle, he wouldn't be playing corner, right? He'd be playing linebacker. So if I can make their cornerback the force defender on jet, we're going to have a good night that night, right? So I got to get these guys in conflict and, and what they're trying to do, okay? Now, when they do this, what's their coverage? Are they going to man up on my tight end wing? Are they going to run a cloud or sky look over there? Okay. Uh, are, are, are there, is there two deep defenders? And again, I've got a corner playing flat and contained. That's not normal for him, right? So we're going to put people in conflict. This is again th against three-man front teams. This is your 3-3, three, 3-4 three, three, teams. This is where I'm going to start. Remember I told you with the 3-3 three, three and the 3-4 teams, I'm going to start on the edge and work in trying to see how I can manipulate uh, defenders out there, okay? With the three-man front, what if he drops that guy back? Well, and that's what he's normal used to. He's used to being their flat contained guy. But what are they doing about my tight end now? Now my tight end's free to double, to go get your FBI, go get your first backer inside. There's some things we can do there. And let's not even talk about if I bring this X receiver over and now the corner comes out and now we only got these two guys, okay? So there's some things there we want to do and, and, and kind of put them in conflict. This starts with film and this is in my opening script on Friday night to see how I can get these guys uh, in conflict, right? Four-man front, okay? 
I, I need to know what the DN is doing. Is he inside shade, head up or outside shade? I need to know that right away. That's one of my first questions that I need answered um, because if he's inside shade, obviously I'm going to run outside of him. They're giving us a lot of grass here. If he's outside shade and he's coming up field, we're going to kick him and run underneath or option him. And if, if he's head up, it's a bitch. To be honest with you, and getting to the de- sneaking ahead to the defensive talk, head up D linemen give the gap schemes the most problem. Head up on the guards, which is double twos. Head up on that tight end, which is a six technique. Head up on that weak side tackle, which is a four technique. Uh, that creates problems with the gap scheme because it's called a gap scheme for a reason, and you're not lining up in the gaps. So it confuses 16 and 17 year old linemen. Okay, so that's where I'm going to start. Um, I can start manipulating my flank to see how far I can get that defensive end. We call it flex or nasty. That tight end's still in a three-point stance. We just put him about six feet out, seven feet out, and see if that defensive end will go with him and have an oh, shit moment. We break the huddle. We snap it in three seconds. That DN sprints out there. The DN goes, oh, shit, I'm too far, too late. We snap the ball. Again, this works because we snap the ball in three seconds. Um, And again, just email me, and I'll explain that to you. I can't explain it in this talk. Okay? Then I'm from the defensive end on the four-man front, I'm going to work to the outside backer, okay? Where's that outside backer? Where is he at in relationship to my wing? Is there a two or three tech? If he's head up on the guard, that changes my trapping game. But if he's a three tech, I'm coming all day with guard and tackle trap. So these are things I need to know. Who's got the flats? Is it man? Is it man? And now that's a, that makes the outside backer a free defender. So I got to run some crossing routes. If it's man, I'm going to take one of these guys and, and run to the run one of the air raid shallow cross stuff and bring our bring our guys across. We call it our brother's concept. Um, last year, our left wing had 11 catches running that air raid, how mummy, whoever you want to give it credit to, shallow cross, shallow mesh stuff. So if they're going to run man, I'll just bring these guys all the way across the field. My wings are usually our best athletes. How about unbalanced, right? We start unbalanced by bringing our receiver over get this letter seater out, and now we now we have enough blockers. It's four against four, okay? Or like I told you, we'll bring four men over, put our receiver here. So now we got our four blockers, and I could bring this, this oops, I could bring this running back over here and have six blockers for our best player. There's a reason we call this guy a tailback, not a fullback. This is our tailback. USC, Marcus Allen, Heisman Trophy. This is our tailback. This is our dude. We're going to make sure he gets the ball. He's going to have a thousand yards every way. So we go and balance. How far are they going to shift? Because if they're going to shift all their guys this unbalanced, now I'm going to run jet this way, speed option this way, or I'll go and balance here, bring this wing over here and run trips over here. So you're going to shift to my strength and I'll run a quick little bubble screen or a smash route over here where I've got numbers. Okay. I want to outnumber them, right? It's just a basketball game. How about to this flank over here to the weak side? What can I do? Okay. Are they pinching? Because it's a three-man front, I always assume they're going to pinch B-gap. How are the uh, safeties rolling with motion? I need This is important, and I need to have a bunch of no-motion plays, which I do. I have a bunch a bunch of no-mo plays, and I have the false stuff, like what you see Navy and Army doing, where we'll go hard motion, get them to rotate, pivot, and bring our guy back and run back against the, uh, against the flop. Um, are they stacked on the guards with the four-man front? I already talked about this. I need to know this. This gives me problems. And again, I need to know where that DN's going. I'm going to kind of fly through this. This is our joker front. If you're going to flop your defense, our tight end sprints out of the huddle. You guys see number 88 lined up over here. Strong right, strong right, strong right. And now we've got two uncovered gaps. This is very common for us. This happens to us a lot where they call the 17-year-old kid calls the strength right. The defensive coordinator from the sidelines making the right call, but the 17-year-old kid on the, on the field is making the wrong call. Okay? I need to know this right here. We like this one. We take our tight end and receiver and put them hand to hand. They can hold hands. If they're in California, they'd be boyfriend and boyfriend and boyfriend. So yes, he's uncovered, but you better bring somebody out because if you don't, I've got a crack and a stock and I'm running, I'm going to run jet to the left wing. I can run swing to the right wing. If you're not going to bring anybody over, I'm just going to step my X back and throw a now screen and our tight end will go get that corner and we'll take the five yards you're giving us. So even though that tight end is uncovered, is covered up and he can't go for a pass, you have to bring somebody out here. And if you bring somebody out here, now I don't have 10 in the box and I can run my A gap and B gap plays. Again, any offense could do this to get the 10 man out of the box thing. Uh, we like this one too, as fast as we can. We just throw it to our wing, who's a good athlete. He's got two lead blockers. We might run empty, bring this tail back over here. So now he's got three lead blockers. 
and we'll put both receivers over here like this, holding hands, put our fullback tailback right here. Now you got fullback tailback, the X and Y, one, two, three, four. You got four lead blockers for our right wing and our wings are very athletic. Our tailbacks are best football player. Our left wing and right wing are our best athletes. This is stuff we do. Okay, kind of wrapping up, getting to the end of this. Some basic things I do against seven man fronts. Where's the safeties? It's getting seven man fronts. I need to know where the strong safety is lining up. It, where is he rolling up to? Because I run a tight end. They can't go too safety high against us. And I have the threat of four verticals. So those safeties have to invert and roll. Where's the sky and cloud? Is it to field? Is it to my tight end? Is the outside linebacker going to come up on our tight end? And usually the seven man fronts have problems with weak side flats. Okay. Again, with the odd fronts, I'm going to start off tackle. Then I'm going to work inside and put the D tackle, the four tech in conflict. And then I'm going to look at safety conflicts based on rolling and where you put your safeties. This is kind of my basic game plan. Start off tackle, second, third quarter, work inside. And then, of course, I've got my safety conflict, which is a different bucket that I'm working out of based on how you're pre-snap and post-snap rolling your safeties. Okay? Alley player, their safeties in a seven-man front have to be aggressive. They have to come up. They have the alley. They have the quarterback keep, the pitches, uh, the now screens, the bubbles. Well, if I can get a safety aggressive, I can play action pass and do some things, okay? Now we get to the seven-man front, but it's an even front. With even fronts, remember, I start inside and work out. So I'm tacking that nose guard one tech, the three tech and the one tech first, and seeing how they react. Then I'll work off tackle with my buck and my power and, and stuff like that, my power read. Uh, power read's our best player. I know I'm a wing T guy, but our power read is absolutely destroying people, okay? So I'm kind of working inside out against the even front teams. And then we have some packages, right? What's the three tech doing? I'm going to hunt for that three tech. Is he upfield or squeezing? And then find the one tech. Is he a one tech? Is he a two I? Is he a two? Because then I'm going to kind of manipulate my play call. Again, my play sheet is based on this stuff. It's not down and distance. What good is the down and distance? I need to know, are you shaded your front? Are you, are you head up? Where's their defensive end? I need to know this stuff. And that's how I make my play calls. So again, pre-snap, where's that safety? Is the safety inverting with motion? This is a big deal, right? Because now I can do that motion and get those safety inverted. Put my best player one-on-one -on -one with your worst corner. And we're just going to go one-on-one -on -one with some slants and some comebacks. Uh, don't make this complicated. It's football, easy game. You get one-on-one -on -one and the better player will win. My basketball coach told me that. Okay? Eight-man fronts, same thing. Because it's, if it's even, I want to start off tackle. I need to know what they're doing with that defensive end out there on the enemy in front. Are they inside shade of the tight end, head up on the tight end, outside shade? I'm going to attack that three tech. If he's shaded, I'm praying that he's shaded. If he's head up as a two, I'm probably not going to go to him as quickly. Um, I'm going to run some plays, and then my D-line coach will tell me, is that two tech slanting with motion? Is he slanting to the field, or is he slanting to the tight end? Once I figure out where the two tech is slanting, because the two tech has to pick a gap. Not very many of us have two gap players. So once I figure out what gap they're slanting to, well, then I know post-snap, he's a three-tech. After the snap, once he slants, he's a, he's a three-tech, and then I can do my game. But I'm going to start off tackle with this eight-man front. These are the plays I'm looking at. Number three is the defensive end. Number three is the defensive end. I'm going to start picking on that defensive end on an eight-man front, and I need to know where that free safety is, right? Um, is he shaded? Where is he going? Is he strong A-gap? Is he field? Um, I've got a team coming up in a couple of weeks where the free safety always, uh, when we're on the hash, he always goes to the field, right? So that's going to uh, dictate some of my calls there. Love the 3-3 three, three stack. When I find out I'm playing 3-3 three, three stack, I know I'm getting 400 yards that night. Some of these 3-3 three, three stack guards in the audience, and they're going to send me hate mail and, and, uh, and, and dirty stuff on the internet, but on, on my social media. But I'm just telling you, I haven't faced a 3-3 three, three stack that, that's been able to stop us. They have to get out of their stack. We're going to start off tackle. A couple of years ago, we placed a really good 3-3 stack team. There were two classifications ahead of us. They won their district in their classification. And uh, we ran outside Veer down 22 times at night at 480 yard runs. Our tailback, who was a 5-240 guy that year, had 238 yards rushing. And we, I think we put up 54 points. And they, we were their only loss. That, we were the only team that beat them. We had 54 points. And they were two classifications above us. They have 1,000 kids in their school. We have 450 but they would not get out of that three, three stack. And so I just kept 
manipulating things and just running off tackle, running off tackle, running off tackle. Right here. Um, when I'm putting in huddle, I just number the linebackers one to five because those three, three stack guys love to bring it. So I just put in the blitz column, I just type the numbers of who blitzes. It's always left to right. But guys, again, and I'm running out of time here, which is always my story of my life. Okay, if I get a tight end right here, okay, I'm going to double this. I'm going to go right there. Okay, now I got a couple choices. I could pull and kick this guy, okay? Or I could run outside Veer, pick off that Mike Backer, and just put this guy in an island. He can't be right. We're going to run this tailback right at him, which is our best football player. Put the ball in the belly. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. That defensive end, number five, has got to make a decision. If he squeezes, my wife could pull it and get 20 yards, okay? Obviously, we're going to be stock, stocking that, okay? We ran that kind of concept, and then I'll bring more blockers over. I'll do this with a four-man surface. So now I got two guys on the linebacker, got my double team here. I don't have any lettuce eaters. This is my X receiver, and I've got four blockers here just, just, just caving down on these two guys with this, this stack backer and this four tech. Okay, again, I talked about that. I've already talked about this. So I'm going to go on, tacking off tackle, doing some things. I'm going to really play games with the four, four man fronts, four, three, four, fours. I'm going to start with that defensive end and then work into the D tackle. And eventually I'm going to tack inside and I'm hunting for the three tack. I need to know if he's a three, if he's a two I, if he's a two. And um, that's got to be my opening script. I have to have that question answered before at the end of the first series that I have the ball. I need to know where that three tech is. Sometimes going in the game, I already know what he's going to do. And that makes it easier for me. And I should be at the end. So we're kind of can stop for questions. I hope I, I went for about, it looks like I went about 25 minutes. I have a, a shorter presentation on defense. Uh, fellas, I hope you get over to uh, my website. I've got books and all this. Um, uh, we've got a wings and things summit we've been doing. So I've got, I think we got, 150 courses on nothing but how to attack wing T shotgun under center pistol stuff like that or just email me um i'm all about coaches helping coaches and um so let me get out of here and see if there's any questions i don't know who's moderating or let me stop my share yep. hey coach um looks like we just have one question so far but if any of you guys that are joining in had other questions, um, you can type them in using the Q&A button here at the bottom of the screen. Um, this one says, uh, versus the wing T or double tight end plus double wing, what do you fear in, what do you fear most in terms of stunts? Inside AB gap or outside CD gap and why? I think the A gap gives us, can give you problems if you're not prepared. Um, because you're always pulling a guard, right? And we try to hide our worst lineman at center. Um, um, so it's nice on paper. I love this. You always draw things on paper, right? Us coaches, we draw these little lines and draw the little thing and say, oh, that guy has that guy. There's a lot of coaching that goes into that little line, right? The footwork, the scoop, there's technique. And is it a freshman blocking a senior? Um, you know, so that a gap gives us problems. Our rule of thumb for you wing T gaps, guys, a play side guard pull. We will cancel it. If they show blitz, we tell our guard, if your stomach's squeezy, just stay home. Don't pull. We'll take care of the edge with a read. We will never cancel a backside pull because our center can block back. Okay. So um, that's kind of our rule of thumb. We actually went over that for two hours today, just a gap blitzing. A-gap blitzing doesn't give us problems because I spend a lot of time preparing for it. I can't emphasize that enough. We all draw plays up on the internet. That's what you run, okay? But what about how, the technique that goes behind it? So just saying your center will scoop or cut that A-gap a, a is easier said than done, especially if he's a young senior and that's a senior linebacker coming with speed. I think it's the A-gap. Uh, the C and D-gap glitches don't give us problems because we'll just kick those out and run up underneath them or play action, and they're going to give up the flats. 
uh, they're going to give up the oh, coach. We'll just go, man. Well, we're going to get our fullback out in the flats then because high school man to man defenses never guard the fullback. Um, I'll tell you what, there's no questions. I'm really excited because we just signed up for about a month ago and our players freaking love it. This team nation thing. So I don't know if Preston's going to uh, pull some things up coaches. I'm telling you, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? It's second best thing to sex. Be honest. You guys need to get this team nation app. Your, our kids just, they're on their phone learning. I've got the formations in and the motion so far, and I'm going to load up the blocking scheme this weekend. So my linemen can learn their blocking. Um, we all know that the kids will not put their cell phones down, right? That's why the participation numbers are down because the kids are like, you want, to put my, you want me to put my cell phone down for two hours and go to practice? Screw that. And that's what's happening. Well, with Team Nation, they don't put their cell phones down. So, Preston, that was a nice, slow law pitch off a tee. Better, you better hit out of the park. Oh, Rick, that was awesome. Appreciate you guys and coaches jumping on here. Obviously, we're right at some of you have probably already started. Rick, you're coming straight from two a days to jump on here. So means a ton uh, for your preparation. It's been awesome. The information has been uh, super valuable. I know all you guys are uh, loving it because I I miss being part of the X's and O's. Um, like Rick said and like Tanner at the beginning, I'm Preston. I'm with Team Nation. Um, some of you may have uh, spoke with us at the Glacier Clinics or seen us online. Basically, what we do is we take your schemes and playbooks and gamify them for an app for your players so they can dive in, study what they need to, learn it in a different format than just a three-ring binder and a notebook. And it, it changes the game for the player side of things. It helps you out. It's a time saver where it's teaching them as you're doing something else. So you don't always have to be hands-on with these players when they're on their phones instead of swiping on Tinder or through TikTok or whatever they're doing. They can be going through your playbook and as Tanner mentioned at the start of this, uh, we're in an early early on with a collaboration with Rick to get a lot of his great material in Team Nation. Um, more details will be presented in the future, but Rick's awesome. Uh, we've loved working with him. And um, I do have a couple things. If Tanner, am I able to share my screen on here? Yes, I believe so. I think... Yes, you're a co-host, so there should be the option down at the bottom here in the center between chat and polls where you can hit share screen. Preston, as you're sharing, what's the actual website? Is it just teamnation.com? Teamnationsports.com. Let's see. I had a couple guys mm -hmm. ask in the chat. I answered it. Okay, awesome. Let's see. Raise hand, Q&A, participant chat. While he's pulling that up, coaches, what he's basically saying, if you are a wing T guy, we're going to put my entire pistol wing tee package. Um, and I've been doing this 32 years. So it's a lot of stuff. Um, we got some triple option in there and things like that. The, the entire pistol wing tee package will be up on team nation. And so if you want to run the pistol wing tee or some version of wing tee, the stuff's already going to be loaded for you. You're not having to load. Like right now I have to draw my plays and then I load it in for my players. It's already going to be done for you. Um, Let's give this a November, January window where, where my pole pistol T thing will be on Team Nation if you guys want to run what I'm running, which I don't have any secrets. It's not like my stuff's the best, but it's just what I do. Yep, awesome. Can Are you guys able to see my screen? Yep, you're yes. good. Great. So this is a quick look. Uh, these are pulled from some uh, Rick's slides that he's just presented, basically as an example of how this will all be loaded into Team Nation for you guys to use. So, and then I will show you how it looks for your players. So obviously you as coaches, it's all a, a relay of information. You as coaches have to then uh, prep your position coaches, your coordinators, and that has to be passed down to the players. What Team Nation does is it eases that um, transfer of information. And so basically I built out um, Rick's uh, part of his presentation here. And this is what the players will see on an app on their phone, where if they're going through, here's just kind of a title slide and I hit next. And then this is those if, if then uh, based off of Rick's basic rules, where if the CB is off the edge or the DN squeezing, run buck sweep and so on. 
and your players can go through seeing these things or your coaches, if they need to learn your basic rules or philosophies, they can kind of click through these. You can drop film clips in here to see examples in action of what uh, the wing T, whatever the play is during or versus certain fronts, even fronts. Yeah, this is this is tack, fellas. This is tackle trap against a four three. So our left tackle should be pulling. Yep. Oh, it's crisscross counter, double handoff counter. So there's there's those two angles of that play. I dropped in on this next slide. Wing T versus a three three. Here's the rules for that, and then some a couple of other plays. Rick can knows these better than I do. That was Buck Sweep. That was that team that's really, really good. They're two divisions higher than us. They won the district that year. We were the only loss. And this end zone shit. You know, I think this is going to be Buck Sweep, fellas. See how they it just, they the stand there three, three. They, they believe in it. So we just kept going off tackle. There's our two guards. Love it. Buck Sweep's the best play in football. And there we go. And so, so basically, play, yeah. What Team Nation does is it puts all of this info in the hands of your players and coaches where they can go through this. There are so many players out there who are timid to raise their hand and practice or in a meeting because they don't want their teammates to think they don't know anything. But if they had this in their hand, they'd get home and they'd run through it. And then here's an example of how our app gamifies the learning. I threw Rick's if then um, rules into a little true uh, card matching quiz where this can obviously be done up with more details with film but if the outside linebacker tackles on belly or down what are my rules here do i run trap yes or no yes i swipe right i got that wrong if the outside linebacker tackles on belly or down do i run veer yes or no rick you you would know these answers better than i do there you go right there down option Yep, we want there an we option go. to so play action. Right. Cornerback squeezes off the edge, right? We're thinking, or squeeze the DM, we're going to run buck sweep. So, so trap is wrong, so it goes left. This is like Tinder. Yep. So it's all a matching Not that game. I've it ever been on Tinder. <laughs> Let it me all, quantify that. It plays into the, the memory repetition for your players or coaches. So they can go through this stuff on their own to learn any rules any schemes that you need guys to memorize, they can come in here and it puts it in an interactive format. You'll see down on the bottom as hey, I'm going through this. Preston, I want to stop you there. So guys, Preston was limited because I'm in two days. So they would, I only gave him the PowerPoint I was making for you coaches. My players wouldn't see a slide like this. Here's what my players are seeing. And I'm going to make it this week. I'm going to put like uh, the question at the top and then my linemen, so I make one for the tackles. Um, buck sweep, and your man is inside shade. Now the tackle has to answer. Does he block down? Does he block out? Does he go get linebacker? And what you do is you only have to put the correct answer in one time, and you put in three incorrect answers. The program automatically pulls the incorrect answers from either that question, but it also pulls the answers from other questions randomly. So you ought to put the correct answer correctly wrong. Now I could put game. I'm mixing up. I've got game film questions by words and actual drawings, whether it's playmaker pro or how to, whatever you're using, I'm still a playmaker pro guy. Cause I'm old. And so the linemen see that drawing. And then the question is, who do you block? Do you pull? Do we cancel the pull? Maybe show a blitz. Do we still pull? Yes or no. Uh, it, it, our, our kids love it. They're they're like, coach, I need another one. I already finished all the questions. Preston, a couple of questions are asking if they've already bought my products or vice versa, they have a Team Nation account. Do they have access to my stuff? Um, fellas, I'll let Preston answer, but we haven't loaded anything yet. Um, we're spending this season and Preston knows better than I do, but I'm guessing this is going to be a two or three or four month journey before my products will be on the Team Nation platform there is going to be a fee i need to be compensated for my time i'm going to spend several hundred hours as is preston because i sent it to him um so it's it's not going to be a free thing like hey i bought rick's book i get this for free if you have a team nation account already 
there'll be an extra fee like as an add-on i'm i'm envisioning yet i don't think we've worked out those details yeah the all, short all answer details will be will be provided in the future we'll we'll relay everything you'll you'll be well in the know of what's going on and and we'll be working through that like rick said it's a it's going to be a process of getting it in there but uh it, you'll know exactly what's available and how to access it this is a great question i like this one i just thought of it brett rubin do coaches have access to team nation now brett preston i've only been doing for my players but i could make a test for my assistant coaches my lower level coaches and quiz them let's see did, can you hear me i think yeah. i might have lost the person yeah exactly that's that's one of the things we've seen a huge use case with team nation is a coach needs his coaches his assistants to know his system as well as anybody obviously because they're the ones preaching it to the players and so we've seen coaches build out instructional lessons quizzes uh and in these learning game styles for their coaches to dive in so when they're relaying the information to the players when they're doing the actual coaching they know the answers they they know it as well as the head coach and any questions they have they're challenging the head coach on it because they they've been in there they know the stuff like the back of their hand so that's a great question you know what i hadn't thought about that coach Bruman. that's a great because we have a youth program that's just starting up and they've been bugging me and i haven't had time to go out there and teach them i could just make a couple quick quizzes basically if you have a phone you could take the quiz i guess you could send it to your grandmother right if you have a phone you just take the quiz um that's how it works Preston, i did i wonder about this what if you don't have a cell phone can they do it on their desktop Yep. So right now there's no desktop app. We're working through those details to make it more accessible to anyone, whether it's at school or not. Right now you do have to download an app. It can be accessed on uh, an iPad, on a parent's phone, uh, but you do have to have access to the app store to get the app. Coaches, I can, I can honestly say we're suiting up about 54 players. Um, we had a team meeting. Uh, I had everybody on the on it in about five to 10 minutes. Um, I had preloaded them because I could upload a roster. So I uploaded as a CSV file. So their emails were already in there. They just, once they downloaded it, um, they logged in with their email, did forgot password, got their password and they were on. Um, it was, it took us all of maybe 10 minutes in a team meeting in our classroom in the, in the, in the thing. Um, so Preston, there's nothing else. We did promise these guys a defensive talk. Um, I see yeah. more guys are logging in because they're coming in from the practice field. Fellas, we're going to switch hats. I'm going to put my D coordinator cap on. Um, I'm going to tell you what gives me problems. I'm not a defensive guy. I always find somebody smarter than me to run, run my defense. Um, I always call the offense. Um, I've only actually called the defense once in my life. It's my defense. I find somebody to run it for me. But this is the stuff that gives me problems. We'll fly through it. Some more guys will log in. And then Preston can jump back in and, and we could do do some Team Nation stuff again. Um, Preston, in the chat box, I maybe you put your email. They can get a hold of you because you guys do that like you did for me, the one-on-one. -on -one. I really like the one-on-one. -on -one. The, they'll do a, like a 30-minute thing with you guys, and it really brought me up to speed real fast. Once I did the 30-minute thing, I really didn't need their help anymore. Yep. Uh, why Preston's I'll putting that in the chat box. Guys, fire questions away. Why Preston's in the background. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my screen. Let's talk about the things that give – the offense problems, what things the defense can do to give the offense problems. All right. So fellas, um, again, this is coming from an offensive mind. All right. These are the things that give me problems. If you guys are logging in late, there's my contact information. My website's always coaching.com. Any link you click on that website goes to me. I'm just me. I'm just a one man band. But if you email me, I'll get back to you pretty quickly. I, I, my, I return my emails within 24 hours. So anything you guys have, have, have questions with, I'll try to help you out. Okay. So let me, let me get this thing up. This is only about 30 slides. So this will go pretty fast, fellas. I know it's getting close to supper time. Um, wish there was some NFL games on tonight, but I guess not. Um, all right. So think about the basic wing T philosophy. As a defensive coach, put yourself in the offensive guy's shoes okay first of all it's not mystical it's created by a, a, a coach with a p degree right this was not some guy with a physics degree okay most people who run it don't understand all of the intricacies and great tendencies i see a lot of wing t guys that run a very basic generic version of the wing t and the answer is yes 
read the guards and you're going to shut them out. Okay. When you play a more veteran coach like myself, because I've been running it a long time, I used to be this guy, bullet number two. I was that guy for about seven years. Well, now you st- I'll false pull you. I'm going to outformation you. I'm going to have a bunch of no motion plays. I'm going to motion one way and run the play back against the motion. But again, I've been doing it 32 years. Most of the guys are going to run a pretty base one, and you could take advantage of those guys. Guys, think of the plays in families or series. There's the buck series. There's a belly series. There's a down series. Every play has the base play. Let me use buck sweep an example. Buck sweeps the base play. There's a counter off of buck, and there's the waggle. The counter actually would be considered guard trap, although we do have a counter off it too. So you'd have buck as the base, guard trap as the counter, waggle as the play action. Then you got belly. Belly's the base play. Tackle traps the counter. Play action's belly pass. They Make sure your players understand that because every play in a series will look the same to your defense so your players need to understand how those three plays go together okay make them make them go to their bag of tricks stop the base plays stop buck down pow, uh, buck down belly and jet make them go to their counters okay um a veteran go like me is going to heavy heavy out motion you out formation you don't have a bunch of checks. Just have your players understand, you know, shift a man to unbalance um, and, and things like that. Don't treat the plays individually. Make Understand they come in packages. It's a lookalike concept. A lot of wing T coaches do not understand the lookalike principle. The three or four plays in the backfield are supposed to look the same. And then the blocking is supposed to look the same. For example, down and buck are in different families. So the backfield looks different, but the blocking is identical. So when you're teaching your kids, hey, when they down block, they do this. That's what the wing T guy's preying on. So you have to understand the lookalike blocking schemes also. So there's kind of two packages there. There's a lookalike blocking and a lookalike backfield. I've got some drawings coming up. You're, if, if he's a good wing T coach, you're going to get a shit ton of formations. You are going to get a lot of formations. So make sure your base stuff's in. That's what August is for. Don't have a bunch of wing T checks that you break out on Monday when you play the guy on Friday. You guys need to have some basic answers to tight in over, X over, four-man surface unbalanced. That stuff should be gone over in August. So when you play the wing T team, you can you your kids understand their base rules of what you're going to do against these funky formations. The wing T is the best play action offense out there. So your DBs better be really, really good, really, really good at understand uh, reading the difference between a play action and a, and a run. Now, here's the deal. The good wing T coaches like myself, we do not pass block on play action. We will down block and we will pull guards. So you're going to get low. You're not going to get high hat on our play action. My lineman will fire out flat back on play action. So you better have some keys to that. The key is your tight end and wings. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? The more things they do, you should be happy. Oh, my God, they run so much stuff. I can't prepare for it. Well, if I, like me, I run a bunch of stuff. So I end up having tendencies because I have so much stuff. I don't, I don't, I don't have enough plays on Friday night to counter my own tendencies, okay? Um, so let's take the series. You got the buck series. The base play is sweep, counters guard trap. You got play action waggle. You got jet. You got the down series, which Tubby Raymond, the Delaware wing T, they didn't even call it down. Down is belly to the tight end side. Treat down and belly the same. Down is belly to the tight end side. All the rules are the same. It's just you're running belly to the tight end side, okay? You always have a counter in there. You're always going to have some sort of option to attack the flank, and you're going to have some sort of play action pass. Some of the wing T guys, like myself, are sprinkling in some triple option. It's very basic triple option. It's what a, a triple option guy would run at the eighth grade level. But now you've got to make sure that your techniques, your if then statements, your read and reacts on defense matches what you're going to do on midline inside veer and speed option. Because a standalone wing T defense can't stop triple option and a triple option scheme can't stop wing T. That's why I put it in there. 
So start with the formations. Start with your tight end wing flank, which I got in the green box. To the tight end wing flank, they can run down buck and down option. Okay? That's what they can run to this flank. Up the middle, they can run guard trap. And on the backside, they have counter and waggle, whether you're called boot or waggle. Guys, if you want a little wing tee lesson, the Delaware wing tee, waggle has two Gs in it. So waggle is when you they pull both guards. Boot is when they only pull the backside guard. Okay? So kind of put your plays in these boxes and, and, and compartmentalize it for your players and your coaches to understand what they're doing. So these guys get good at these plays. The, your guys up the middle have to get good at these plays. And your backside guys, your CBR, your counter boot reverse players, they understand. This is with no motion. This is the Delaware. Uh, that's the 100 formation, okay? There's no motion. When you get motion, so this wing's going to go in motion this way. This wing here is going to go in motion this way. Well, now what can they do? How they tack the flank is belly pass and belly sweep. The no motion, that's a no motion play though. The core play is belly, which is weak side ISO, good old fashioned weak side ISO. Coaches, belly is the inside zone of wing T because we do teach this tailback. He can cut back to the backside A and he can jump cut it to the C. So from a running back perspective, it's the inside zone of the wing T. And then the counter coming back is the tackle trap, okay? So overview of your game plan. Make sure you can get lined up. Make sure you can defend these formations. Your two inside backers are on a string. Don't have a, a backside linebacker slow play anything. Your two inside backers have to attack, attack, attack. It's your backside outside backer and defensive end that takes care of counter boot reverse. Make sure you get a three on two on the tight end wing reads, okay? And overload the attack side. I mean, attack it. Attack where the flow starts. If they're going to run that belly play, let me get rid of some of this. If they're going to run this wrist right here, attack this. Attack it. And have your backside DN and your backside backer sit on the counter. But everybody else attacks that belly, okay? So you got to make sure your alignment. This is my defense, right? This is this is our game green read and react. So we have some, some basic alignments. We're one by one off the wing, four by four on the weak side, okay? This right here, some people call it an under front. This is very hard on wing T teams. Putting that nose guard in the play side A gap on the tight end side. My drawing's messed up. There should be a tight end here. And there should be a wing here. Fellas, this right here, don't do it the whole game because I have answers to this. Mix it up once in a while. But I'd say half the game, attack that strong side A gap. This is a bitch because if this guy pulls on bucking down, this guy by rule is supposed to get that nose guard. Well, if this tackle is a four eye, your defensive tackle blocks my tackle from getting him and your nose guard runs in here free and makes the tackle, okay? That is very hard to defend and it requires a lot of game planning for me. Stacking the guards gives me problems because you took my trapping game away. We're supposed to trap the first guy past the guard. So now our guard's got to step inside, escape to back or grab grass and go here. Well, if you're squeezing, you're going to stop that from happening. You're going to force us, whether it's the guard or tackle pulling, it doesn't matter. You're going to force us to long pull it. You're going to force the jump, the tailback to jump cut. And it's all jacked up because guard trap and tackle trap in the wing T do not block these two guys. We're trying to go right up the gut and not run them. So these two guys just come free and make the tackle when you squeeze hard and wrong shoulder it. Then you play some games, and every once in a while, this tackle shoots out. And now my, my 17 year guard's all jacked up. He doesn't know if your two-tech tackle is going in or out. So I would say you bounce back and forth between strong A gap and head up two. You're going to force me to have a long halftime. And, and, and I spend all of August on these two problems because you just get in traditional one and three. None of my kids are confused. Now you might be better than us. So you might beat us, but 
our kids are not confused if you get in a traditional just one and three tech. If you're A-gap and C-gap on the interior and you go outside Shea the tight end, um, the wing T teams lick their chops against the four three teams that go a one, a three, and a nine tech with the two backers inside. You know, you guys, oh, I stopped the wing T all time with that. I stopped the wing T. I'll, I'll draw it up for you, coach. Yeah, if you're well coached and you know how to squeeze and your kids have great technique and you – your kids are stronger than us and your kids are faster than us. Yeah. All I'm saying is my kids are not confused. Okay. But when you go strong a gap and, and double twos, you're going to confuse guys. Now for sake of time, I'm only going to talk about the strong a gap. I'm not going to talk about the double twos. We just don't have time. So let's draw up some things. What the strong a gap does to me. Okay. Oh, that's not supposed to say belly. That's supposed to say, buck. so the traditional buck sweep, this is my basic defense. I haven't went to the strong A yet, okay? We go 404, even though we're a 425. And as soon as the ball snaps, this guy's going to step hard and he is going to stop this tackle from getting to the linebacker. If this tackle gets to this linebacker, my defensive tackle, this guy right here, gets a. Um, let me erase that. My. On the, on the, um, this guy right here gets a negative two on that play if this tackle gets to this linebacker. So his job in life, we tell him the only reason his mama had him was to step down and stop this tackle from getting this linebacker. That makes this linebacker a free hitter. That's the first thing. We are going to step hard here. So after the snap, my nose guard becomes a one tech and my tackle becomes a four eye. Well, as soon as the center steps this way, our guard's taught to cross face, not to come up field. Our nose guard will not come up field. He will cross face that. This is who we take care of counters. So this backer here, we want him hard. Get attack play side. Attack play side. Our Falcon is a third linebacker. He fits off the mic. If the mic goes outside, the Falcon comes inside. They fit off each other. These two guys stay home. Our defensive end, eyes are on the quarterback, period. End of sentence. Our defensive end, eyes are on the quarterback. He can't have his eyes on the quarterback and the opposite wing. So if the quarterback boots out, the defensive end is going to sack him and play that play at his wedding. This guy here, as soon as flow goes away, his eyes go to this opposite wing for counter. That way he doesn't have to worry about quarterback. So our wing has counter reverse if they run a receiver reverse and our defensive end has boot. So this is, and then if they're pulling guards, we breed guards. So our line, our two inside backers, our Mike and our bull, they're gone. Johnson, they're gone right now. Our rhyme for this guy is if you pull away opposite a, your guard pulls away opposite a. So this bull is thinking guard trap. He's going to come hard to the a. Once he realizes it's not guard trap, then he'll scrape to go help. They do not slow play it. Our bull, our Mike and Falcon are getting there right now. And our spur, our outside backer, this guy right here, his job in life is to turn it inside. We're a funnel team. We're not going to wrong shoulder and bounce it because we're too slow. We're not athletic enough to bounce this thing. If, you, if we bounce it, your band's playing. So we're going to come up field two steps and turn this thing inside to one, two, three. And, and you're only pulling two guards. We're going to get three guys to the party. Okay. This guy's going to have, that's not drawn, right? This guy has the wing counter and this guy has wag. Now the strong a, this is what I was talking about. What was this guy's job in life to step and block that tackle? Our D tackle becomes an offensive lineman. There's no way this center is going to scoop it. You can draw it all you want. My nose guard is going to shoot right through there and make a four-yard tackle for a loss. Your center is not going to scoop that. You might get a piece of my right thigh, but my nose guard is going to beat your center every time in Sunday because my nose guard is going to be about a 180-pound wrestler, and your center is going to be a guy who ate way too many Twinkies and refried beans, and our nose guard is going to shoot through there and tackle that thing, okay? So you're going to stop buck and down. You're going to stop me from pulling my play side guard. I'm going to have to make a stay call. 
and I'm going to have to start running power and some other things. You've taken away two of my best play, which is bucking down. All I've got left now is jet and belly. That's what it's going to look like right there. On waggle, our base defense, our nose guard already steps week A. That's his first step. Then he reads the guard. If he steps, if he steps this way and the guard pulls that way, he cross faces. If he steps this way and the guard pulls that way, he has a choice. Beat the tackles down block and get in the backfield, which again, my DN's job in life is to put both hands on that left tackle. We are going to squeeze this thing and put both hands on the left tackle so our nose guard should be able to shoot through there or our nose guard can scrape over the top, okay? Our will is going to have the fullback in the flats. Our bull, because the guard pulls, it goes hard C. This guard pulls, you pull away, opposite A. You go A, you realize it's waggle, you go join, okay? This guy and the nose guard are going to get the quarterback sack. Now I've had, right? We tell this kid, we tell this kid, we tell this guy, you have flats, you have quarterback. And then they're 17 year old kids. I didn't listen to my coaches when I was 17 years old. Your will shoots up and we dump it to our fullback in the flats and it's gone Johnson. Waggle is the only play in the wing T attack where the guards pull opposite of the backfield flow. So your mic, your bull, and your free safety can read this right now. Your safety has that tight end drag. Your corners are going to take care of the backside post, and you're just going to man. In fact, I would man up on this all day long. Don't even run zone to the play to the split inside. Just man up on that guy. The only play in the wing T offense where the guards pull one direction. And the running backs go the other direction is waggle. Okay, so that's what it will look like right there. You guys can go back and watch the recording. This is already drawn in the PowerPoint. If you're going to email me for the PowerPoint, this is all drawn up. This is how we would defend waggle. Okay, this bull should be sacking this quarterback. And like I've already said, he better, he's going to play that video at his wedding. Okay, let's talk about belly. Got to stop the core plays, buck, belly, and down. I'm not going to talk about down tonight. So because I'm strong side A, wow, I got to be careful about the weak side ISO play. But putting this guy in the B gap really creates problems for belly, especially if your defensive end's a pretty strong guy and their left tackle is not going to drive your end backwards. If your end can pitch a tent and start a campfire right there and stalemate it, what you've got is two. 250 pound guys, right? You got 500 pounds, 400 pounds sitting there in the B gap. Here's the other key the wing T coaches, we want to cut this thing back. That's what we're praying for. That's the touchdown. Well, you've taken the cut back away. And we never cut back when the tackle down blocks. So you've eliminated right off the bat the cutback, the home run play. So by forcing this tackle to down block, now you've really dictated where the tailback, the fullback's going to run. He has to run right there. It's not inside zone anymore. Now that I know for a fact where the fullback's going to run, now I can manipulate it, right? And I can get my falcon and my bull there right now, okay? Get my falcon and bull there right now. We will near shoulder this with our will. If we go up in wrong shoulder and they log us, that quarterback's going to pull it and he's going to run option off your lettuce eater. So you've got to near shoulder the edge and force that up inside to your mic, your bull, and your falcon. On this motion, your falcon should already come over because when they motion, the tight end's the only eligible receiver, and your corner just takes that man to man. That turns into automatic man to man. Everybody else sells out to the run. 
tackle trap. Remember, there's a there's a core play. The core plays the belly, and every series has a counter. So the tackle trap play, the tackle is going to pull. They want to kick out the first man past the guard. So that's what the play would look like. My nose guard's at a huge disadvantage because they're going to double him. So he knows just to grab grass and make a three man pile. But my tackle, remember his job in life. The only reason his mama had him was to stop this tackle from getting this backer. My Mike backer should be free to make this tackle. He'll take one or two steps. He'll see this tackle pulling. And actually with the down block, this action here, when we get down blocks like this, our linebacker wouldn't go this way. He's supposed to fight back against those down blocks. He should be a free hitter if my D tackle will stop the right tackle from getting the linebacker. Coaches, I don't have it on this slide, but on that train of thought, if you want to put your defensive end inside shade of the tight end, that's not a bad strategy if you've got a good outside backer. Because if you put your defensive end inside shade of the tight end and get into a four eye right here, the tight end and the tackle cannot get to, the, to your FBIs, your first backers inside. And now your Mike and your bull, your inside backers are free hitters by keeping the right tackle and the tight end off your linebackers. Counter. Now, the traditional wing T counter play pulls guards. So this guy's gone Johnson. Now, again, there's lines on the play draw, and there's what happened on Friday night. What is the only thing this guy's supposed to do? Squeeze hard and stop the left tackle from getting my mic backer. My Mike backers is there right now in the backfield because the guard pulled. Now, coaches, if you played me, I don't pull the guard. I pull tackle and tight end for this reason. And my tight end gets the counter player, okay? And we coach every day our escape step. Big reach step, lean on the thigh, grab grass with your left arm, rip through and get to this backer. Don't let this DN stop you. But defensively, your DN needs to stop him, okay? You're in that uh, um, strong A-gap stuff that I talked about. This is even better, right? Because you have a DN, your DN sits in this B-gap and blocks that left tackle from getting, getting that linebacker. Now my linebacker is a free hitter when you pull the guard. Pulling the tackle and tight end makes it a little tougher on your defense. That's why I pull the tackles. So if they're going to pull the guard, you're thinking you're lucky stars because if they pull the guard, all these guys are going right now because that pulling guard gets everybody in, the, in, in hard flow. And remember, attack the play side. The counter, the left side of the offense is actually the play side, right? These two guys are worried about counter. Now this is counter. So we have a rhyme. Flow away, stack and stay. He comes straight across at five yards. And he stacks behind the DN. If the DN squeezes, he stacks a little farther. He does not come up. He comes straight across, stacking behind the DN, and his eyes are right here. The way he sees the wing coming, he's screaming the top of his lung like he's in a fire. Counter, counter, counter. Bring everybody to the party. And that will sit in there on that counter. And on Sally, which I'm not going to draw that up, okay? Some blitzes and stunts. We're going to wrap this up, fellas. It's supper time. Um, when you get, especially with the wing, you get a motion, that's easy. Have your linebacker buzz his feet. If you're a 3-3 three, three stack team, this is really good. Have this linebacker buzz his feet and just look at this guard. It's, we call it a blitz read. Guard pulls, shoot it right now. Shoot it right now and just make it a, make it a blitz, okay? Either the 3-3 the three, three stack back or this backside backer. Once they go in motion, now it's a little bit tougher when they don't do motion. So your eyes are here, and as soon as this guy opens, right, you can maybe maybe shoot that. It's going to be a little tougher, okay? Blitzing into motion. You need to find an outside backer that has no regard for his help. He's going to come in here at 100 miles per hour and blow this up. So now this guard pulls. This fullback comes to kick out. You want to meet this guy as far in the backfield as possible because wing T coaches every single day. 
Um, my son's turning in to be one of the best running back coaches in America. He does a great job. And every day we work mesh because we want our running backs rubbing shoulder to shoulder so we really can hide the ball. So our footwork and our mesh points in the backfield are very, very precise. We're bird dogging this every day. Well, you go and take Kamikaze Carl, and he comes hitting our guys in the backfield and messes all of our backfield mess points up. Coaches, I'm going to give you some advice. Don't blitz behind the motion. That doesn't give me problems. I'm going to play action this and sneak somebody in the flats. Blitzing into the motion, blitzing head on into the motion gives us the most problems. Coaches, I hope this helped. I left a lot of stuff out. Um, this is actually like a two hour video on my website that I had to condense down at the 26 minutes. If you want to go to my website, alexiscoaching.com, I've got a 300 page playbook. This is all drawn out. I've got a chapter on wing T, a chapter on zone read, a chap, three chapters on air raid and a chapter on how to stop double wing. And every year we do a national defensive online clinic. I go find 30 of the best defensive coaches I can find high school and, 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 um, college. And we do an online summit. All the information's at my website. Um, we did it in May this year, but we're going to do this, do it early. It'll be right after the signing period. Um, so it'll be like third, fourth weekend of, of May. We go Thursday night, Friday night, all day Saturday. Um, it's 30 speakers, 50 talks, nothing but defense, all online. Uh, you learn football in your underwear, sitting on the couch, drinking a beer. Okay. Or you can come to our website and get this defensive book. Um, Preston, I'm, I'm wrapping up here. If there's any questions, I see three in the chat. Th those might be from me. I put those in there. Appreciate it, Rick, and all the pre all the preparation you put in here. Obviously, you guys are in the thick of it right now. So this was awesome. And coaches, thanks for jumping on. Well, um, I'm I'm going to give a shout out to Glazier Clinics. I've been speaking yep. for them a lot of years. The CEO of Glazier Clinics, Chris Coughlin, is one of the kindest human beings on the planet. He's assembled a great team. His son, Aaron is uh, uh, Alan Means is in charge of us speakers. Um, I've been very blessed. I've been speaking for 10 years. Those PowerPoints, I already had them because I presented for that year, for several years. At, that's one of my, that's, those two PowerPoints are some of my wing T talks. So I, I can't take too much credit, Preston. Some of those PowerPoints I made a couple of years ago. Um, I was under the recording. I hope you guys, I think I'm, did I set a record for probably the guy who talked the fastest through a webinar? Um, I was trying to fly through that thing pretty fast. Um, so I, I, you know, I sound like a bunch of women at a, at a cocktail party, just wrapping my jaws, but, um, no, I, I love speak for Glazier. Glazier is a great tool. If coaches, if you're not attending a Glazier clinic and you're not a member of the Glazier drive, I, man, you need to go get your head examined. I, I don't know what it is now. Um, but I think it's 50 or 90, but it's like ridiculously cheap. It's, it's what you would pay one night at the casino. And, and one night, take your wife to dinner and you get all year on the Glacier Drive and, and stuff like that. I think it's up a little bit higher now. Maybe it's for an individual. I don't know if he wants to jump in there. I don't know what the, but you, I think being a member of the Glacier Drive, it includes going to all the clinics. It does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, you got to do, I do that every year. I just buy my path. I, I could probably ask for a free one as a speaker and I don't, I just buy mine every year. It's great value that Glacier Drives. I mean, I hope you guys go to my website, but. I'm like the little kid on the block. The Glazier drives the, the King enchilada. So um, anyways, Preston, I, I didn't do those PowerPoints last night. I've, I've done those over the years for the Glazier clinic. So I want to give a shout out. I, yeah. I, I love the Glazier family. They've been very good to me and, 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 and um, they're, they're good people. Yep. Appreciate it. Glazier, uh, everyone involved over there and Rick and every, all your time, all you coaches and good luck with this season. Give me, you can reach out to me at Preston at teamnationsports.com or go to our website, teamnationsports.com and you, you can contact us there. Appreciate it, guys. Guys, if you want awesome. the PowerPoint, if you came on late, it's just, it's my logo. It's rick at allaccesscoaching.com. If you email me, I'll send this stuff over tonight. Um, I'll send you my play sheet, the evaluation sheet, how we grade players, and I'll send you these two PowerPoints. Some of you guys got on long got on late and probably missed the first one. Hey, I'm assuming though, this will be recorded and put on the Glacier Drive. It is, yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah so I guess we're done, right? Is beer 30? Yep. Yeah, we don't have any questions that popped up through that part. So I think without further ado, um, thanks again, Coach Stewart for joining us. And thanks Preston for all the good information about Team Nation.
Um, so thanks to the thanks to the slides you guys put together is awesome. Um, and I guess everybody just have a great rest of your night. We'll see you next time. Thanks, fellas. Appreciate it, guys.